When I was really young, seven or eight maybe, I can't remember which, I stumbled across a photograph of what I was sure had to be the most amazing thing ever assembled. In this old black and white snapshot were two fearsome dinosaurs, posed with their jaws stretched wide, their long tails wriggling, and their feet firmly planted in the ground. And remember, these weren't just any dinosaurs. These were skeletons of the greatest dinosaur of all, Tyrannosaurus rex. A pair of them, depicted moments before battling each other over the carcass of the dismembered hadrosaur at their feet. And I decided right then and there that wherever those skeletons are, whatever museum in which they stand, that I will visit them one day to see the battling tyrants firsthand. So I'm sure you can imagine my disappointment when I learned that that little dream of mine would never come true because the dinosaurs in that grainy photograph were never really there. It all began with Henry Fairfield Osborne, an experienced fossil hunter and animal expert working at the American Museum of Natural History. Osborne, young and cocky, had big plans for the museum. His goal was to build the greatest fossil collection on Earth, and to follow through with this plan, he would need the help from some of the greatest explorers and scientists America had to offer. Most notable of all, a young and gifted fossil collector from Kansas named Barnum Brown. After working for a few years in the Badlands of Wyoming to find skeletons to fill the museum's hall of fossil mammals, Brown set his sights on outcrops in the Badlands of Montana, because Osborne wanted dinosaurs. And in 1902, that's just what Brown found. He and his team began excavating a series of very large fossils from an unknown creature, embedded firmly into a cliffside. Brown then had the bones packaged and shipped back to New York, this wasn't a complete skeleton, mind you. In fact, it was rather scrappy, comprising just a few vertebrae, a lower leg bone, parts of a pelvis, and most notably, portions of the animal's fearsome skull, including a set of huge jaws. The biggest killer dinosaur known at the time was the mighty Jurassic hunter Allosaurus, named some 30 years before. Packaged in a body 8 meters long with a set of large claws wielded by powerful arms and a skull filled with dozens of sharp, recurved teeth, Allosaurus was the terror of the Jurassic. This new skeleton was from the much later Cretaceous period, and it looked very different. Firstly, it was nearly twice the size of Allosaurus, standing 6 meters high and stretching to nearly 12 meters long. 